Steven Crowder is an individual who never misses an opportunity to dress in women's clothing. You see him here, very excited to get into quote-unquote character. Um, we have him here, really just like, you know, <laughs> he's vibing for the camera, you know, sashaying, really, really enjoying himself, very comfortable here. We also have him in uh, this dress here, and I think that the tweet really just puts it best. Anything remotely to do with women whatsoever, Crowder, I should wear a dress. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he finds any excuse imaginable to wear a dress. Now, the reason why I'm talking about him again is because after the announcement of his divorce, um, where thankfully we learned that his infant babies are not to blame in this situation, so that's good to know. Um, because I assumed that the children were demanding that they get a divorce. But either way, um, so after the divorce, you have a lot of people in Crowder's world, his ex-employees, kind of speaking out. And they're spilling the tea. And it's it's pretty, uh, it's pretty unsurprising what they have to say. So the first is Owen Benjamin. This is a former, um, or excuse me, a, yeah, yeah, no, this is a former employee, as uh, Wild Geeter says here. He's a current neo-Nazi. So, you know, take what he has to say with... Uh, with a grain of salt, but what he says here, it seems pretty on brand for Steven Crowder. So he writes here, when Steven Crowder asked me to perform with him in Michigan, I said, of course, because he was the team leader and we were gonna own the left. We worked on a song making fun of transgenderism. Right before showtime, they put me in tight white pants and a bedazzled cape and he wore a Speedo and leather chaps. I'm a natural Bravo, not not an alpha, despite appearing very dominant in most scenarios. Thank you for that information, Owen. I follow the team leader's decision, even though it didn't make sense to me. This is my favorite part. How is dressing like degenerate fruitcakes owning the left? <laughs> I agreed, so I'm no victim, but I felt very uncomfortable saying no, and I didn't want to let down the team. Like, I I'm just trying to imagine the situation where, like, Stephen Crowder's like, okay, Welcome, everyone. Uh, hope you had a great weekend. What we're going to do today is we are going to dress in drag, and it's going to be so great. Like, the left is going to be so triggered, and they're all just sitting there, like, scratching their heads. How exactly is this owning the left? Gay! Anyways, he says, Over time, I realized more and more that we weren't owning anyone, and I just kept being asked to wear really degrading and sexualizing outfits. It's the main reason I now don't focus on whatsoever on what religion or political association uh, someone claims. That was a clumsily worded sentence, but I think we get the point. Uh, only behavior. Because the only thing Steven Crowder is owning is a bunch of dresses and a broken home. Change my mind. God damn. So, again, former employee of Steven Crowder saying that oftentimes he would try to pressure them into wearing women's clothing. Now, on top of that, you have, uh, what's his name? Dave Landau. This is the dude who Ethan Clyde referred, Klein referred to as a gremlin when um, that whole uh, Sam Cedar kerfuffle happened. And apparently he no longer works for Crowder as well. I actually was not aware of this. But he is spilling the tea about Crowder um, on this podcast. This is the uh, Michael Malice YouTube channel. Um, the podcast is called You're Welcome. And apparently he's going to speak to the hostile work environment at the Louder with Crowder um, studio. So let's listen. The beginning was great. Uh, for a while, you know, it really was. It was a lot of hanging out, collaborating, putting out sketches, doing the things that I was hired for. Mm, really important context real quick from Nexus of Midnight. Crowder had another side named Not Gay Jared and Crowder made him sign an NDA. And now that dude can't get work. Yeah. So I actually heard about this and this was confirmed by Candace Owens of all people during their initial spat. Um, when he first announced that the con the uh, contract from the Daily Wire was a slave contract, when they offered him only fifty million dollars over four years, but um, yeah, let's let's continue this here. It's definitely a grind, uh, but that was part of it. Um, the the pot was sweetened, so to speak, is what I was offered. It was not this gigantic payday that everybody seemed to think. It was uh, almost no bump, but you didn't uh, get was... fifty million dollars. 
No, no, I didn't get. I got about a grand extra a year, but I, re, you know, it's hard to talk about money. But wow, it was, a, it was. But I knew that it would help on the road, and you know, he wanted me to. So be So you've there. got Stephen Crowder saying that the Daily Wire's fifty million dollar contract over four years was a slave contract, but all this dude got for going full time was an extra thousand a year. Wow, wow! Can't say I'm surprised though. On more Fridays, um, and that started being a point of tension. Because I started making money on the road, but and I did say I would be there on more Fridays, but every time I would show up, he wouldn't show up. Okay. And I just said, all right, well, I'm just going to work or go and see my son. And, you know, he's in Detroit. And I said, as long as everything was working out, there was a possibility that they could move there. Yeah. They mean um, you're your family. Yes. So about a year went by and, and things had gotten more tense, like things were more restrictive. For example, uh, um, I had been more censored as things went on where I couldn't, for example, say the word come. Okay. Uh, like ejaculate. I, I right. forgot when I made the joke that was offensive or whatever it was. You about. could only eat it. You couldn't say it's, it's going to go in your mouth, not come out of your mouth. I could eat it with a spoon or I could say yummy yum yums when referring to it, <laughs> but I could never actually say. I could eat it with a fork. I could eat it on a ship. I, <laughs> yes. I can't finish the rhyme, but you get me. I could call, <laughs> I, I could refer to, I could go, those are nice gutters you have. <laughs> you know, it, it became a little weird because a light was put in where it was his rant button and it was basically a dave don't talk button wait so there's literally a light bulb what color was the light bulb there was four lights in a row <laughs> there were three it... lights. <laughs> <laughs> serious and when it was hit i wasn't supposed to talk and they said really, what, know... was it like a regular colored light bulb or was it like red uh, it was like a a, a yellow a, okay. a pretty bright yellow like a, okay. a you know like yield so it's like off camera, but in your eyesight. Yes. And, and I was... would he be the one pressing the button or was there a producer pressing the button? He would press it. So like under, like Mr. Burns, like he had a button under his desk or, or the table. And when it's Steven's turn to talk and Dave needs to shut the F up, he presses this button. Yes. How do I get this to happen? Because right... that is extremely weird. Because you have him on, presumably as a co-host or a side host or whatever, but you have a button that you can press when you feel as if, like, you need the attention. I mean, this is a very predictably histrionic fact about Steven Crowder, but um, it's just kind of, it's just really weird, right? Because it's, it's diva-like behavior. He wants everyone to know that he's Beyonce and everyone else is Michelle Williams and Kelly Rowland. Um, that's a Destiny's Child reference, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, all the heterosexuals watching. Um, but anyways, it's just, it's really, it's so bizarre. But anyways, I'll let them continue. How were you informed that there is a don't talk light? And what was your reaction? Um, I was pissed a bit because I know my job. I, I right. know that he talks a lot i know that he's the star of the show i know when to throw him what he needs to be thrown i know when to sit back it's what i did with anthony for years it's what i did next to Artie. it's what i i it's what i do i'm not trying to ever steamroll him right it, it it was just hey don't be don't be funnier don't be and, and it's that's the truth i mean it sounds bitter but i knew it was true because i was pulled aside and i said and it was hey make sure if you're doing a rant or like you guys are riffing he gets the last word you were told this explicitly yes wow well, is it that maybe he didn't want to talk over you so that the show is called louder with crowder but not loudest with crowder so yes. he, said, he wants to at a, it's about a seven but not at a 10. You can yes. understand that. Yeah, I think that was it. I, it was all about the title and I wasn't respecting it. So there needed to be a light. And I had to make sure that, you know, he, he got the last thing. So even if I did have a funnier joke, I would just leave it out. It was important to for the fans to not hear it. I always felt that my job as a comedian was to leave out the good one. That's I, that's. That's it. I, I, I don't know. I've never heard of that, to be honest. I mean, I don't feel like that's a thing, but maybe what do I know? I've never been a co-host. 
I've heard it in radio a couple times. Very rarely, yeah. But I have heard of it where it's just the star needs to look like the star. So I guess, you know, it's it's his show. Fine. But I also feel like somebody who's so pro-free speech and non-censorship, he was really about censorship. (laughs) Okay. Involved me. Um, But, you know, he was going through, you know, surgery that was a big deal at the time and stuff. I was fairly forgiving of it, you know. And then about a year in, it was February 2022 for the Super Bowl. The he, he wanted me to film a special. Okay. In drag and, or uh, what kind of I, like I'm sorry, episode? he didn't. I wanted to. I'm you sorry. You wanted to film a special. Okay. Yeah. Stand up comedy. So yeah. I had decided I was going to buy the equipment and film the special in Dallas. Uh, and we were selling out this theater. And he decided he wanted to get back into stand up, which he had done when he was younger. Okay. And he had just been a host since then. Uh, so he said, Hey, if I, can I jump on and open it and I'll help promote it and you can help me maybe write some of my, my stuff, get me back into it and I'll help promote it. And I said, sure, of course. So we ended up selling out two shows, obviously, instead of just one because he was yeah. helping promote it and he's a draw. So we went there and Matt McClowry was the opener. He's been on this show as well. If people can look back. Yep. Autistic, oh, brilliant. literally autistic comedian, Mount Clary. Very funny. literally autistic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The real deal. The real, the real kind of shooter. And can he's trans can, too? <laughs> yes. You didn't know. <laughs> if he's really passing as a freak. <laughs> yeah. Them like their banter is giving me hard breathing. It's just like get to the fucking point. Holy shit! I get this is a podcast and you're trying to draw it out, but we've been listening for. 11 minutes now and all that we know is that there was a yellow button get to the fucking point dave holy shit yeah he does a great job born yeah. a lady but totally i you know pulled steven aside and steven couldn't do the monday show and i said could matt come in and and co-host with me he said yeah so now it's super bowl sunday the whole special went great um, I paid everybody to film it except for uh, one other person, Tim, who was there to film Steven's set. And I was very looking forward to the special coming out. And Monday had, uh, or Sunday had rolled around, and I get a call from the showrunner that said Matt's not allowed to do the show. How did they tell you? Like, literally, what they say? Uh, via text, it was just um, Matt's not allowed. Uh, Matt can. Uh, it's been like decided something like that. Matt, I can find the text. But, but the word is allowed. It's not like we don't have time or won't fit the schedule. The word was Correct. allowed. Matt's or not permitted allowed or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To do the show on Monday. Is and there I, any? Was there any explanation at all? No. Okay. So I said that's odd. I already asked Stephen, and he said it was okay. Yeah. And they said, "Oh, that's weird. I must have gotten mixed messages." So I just texted Steven and said, hey, I, I just talked to the showrunner. Um, I just want to make sure it's still cool that Matt comes in. And he texted me something back along the lines of what's done is done. Oh. Okay. And I said, what, it, what does that mean? It's your show. Wait, but wait, yes. maybe, he, maybe he had a light. And when the light went on, <laughs> the decision making ceases. See, you have the yellow light. He's got the red light in his house. There's it's it's lights all the way up. It's that true. He, maybe when I asked him, he was seeing a... Yeah, after seeing this banter, I think that corn pop for Prez, your comment is spot on. A shut up Dave button makes sense to me. One thing I agree with Crowder on. Yeah, honestly, seeing like how much he's just going on these ta- tangents and all the superfluous information he's providing us with here, um, it honestly does make sense. So I do have to agree with Steven Crowder on that. Good observation, corn pop green light yes you idiot uh, yeah i i know I, this I, is how I show, biz- show business works it's this yeah. what's what it is the business of show and yes. i am not paying attention to the how light. are you going to show things without lights you're going to yes. show them in the dark that makes no sense we've made these it's jokes before move it along <laughs> come on like, move it along. this is why i'm sitting here on my demon chair instead of in a nice yes. studio <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i said what does that mean it's your show which is ironic that's what he yeah. said and my phone rings and you know i, I don't want to go greatly into the conversation between us but it was it, he's like do you want to do you still want to be on Wilder with crowder and i said not at the moment and uh he starts going off on me and now there's a ton of people in my apartment who can hear it wait like, he's literally raising his voice he's screaming at me Okay, so literally raising his voice, not just being stern, like to the point where people, it's audible. 
Uh, it's Audible, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, started Stern, but then it got into telling me that he owns me. And, and In those words? Of, yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He owns me. And and once you say that, it must have been on clearance. <laughs> I mean, no one, I, I was on sale, like, baby. Neither of us can even reach the top shelf, let alone no. sit on it. No, no, it's it's. It... <laughs> I was in a basket with a bunch of balls. He, he, uh, <laughs> I was in a looted Walmart. Yeah. He, uh, it, it was just, it was, a, it was venomous. And I don't know okay. what he was going through. He got back to the point. So I was going to speed it up, but let's listen. With that point. And I just was like, dude, I, this is, it was all this projection coming at me. Wait, let's slow it. down. Let's slow down because you're a comic, right? Yeah. So I'm obviously not a comedian, but there have been many moments in my life when things are so surreal. Okay. I don't know how much more of this I can take because, again, we started at minute 10. We're 15 minutes in and we've learned two things that Steven Crowder created a hostile work environment, yelled at him, also um, had a yellow button. But this is just very difficult to get through. Yeah, he said, let's slow down. I, I, I can't take any more. Um, and the reason why I'm moving along is because there's more revelations about Steven Crowder did, that I do want to get to. Well, let's just save that for later. Uh, save this for later, rather, and get to that. So this is Natalie Corzone, sister of Hillary Corzone, who is um, married to Steven Crowder, or was, but is asking for divorce. Now, somebody else had stated that this is for sure Steven Crowder's sister-in-law, and um, I haven't independently confirmed that, but there is this video on YouTube from her account uh, 10 years ago where she's making the speech at the wedding, and this appears to be the same person. I'm lucky for Hillary. She found that person. So Hillary... Years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways... Uh, this appears to be Steven Crowder's uh, sister-in-law. Anyways, she has kind of been going off on Twitter, giving us some additional insight into the end of his marriage. And um, it's not surprising. Like, what she says is 100% believable. Actually, real Candace Owens knew there was a lot going on behind the scenes, chose to stay out of it, and Steven decided to drag her into this into his video about his divorce where he placed public blame on his wife. So Candace offered her a platform to get the full truth pretty simple oh wow so candace owens was going to bring on stephen crowder's wife very very interesting so this is from the quivering i'm out on the candace v uh crowder thing it's a horrible look for two very rich people candace offering to bring his ex-wife on her show and insinuating he was flirting with her in the dms simply uh for paying her a very basic compliment is gross though so yeah this person her sister responded saying, well, if he's going to blame her and he has a very large platform, this is kind of her attempt to have her voice heard. And I think that that's reasonable. Um, but for Candace Owens to capitalize on that, you know, you know that she's a uh, she's a little bit pissed, but you should do it, Candace. Um, there's more. Hope Hillary and the kids have a support system and know how loved they are. Crowder is literally literally poisoning his relationship with his kids. I know from experience and I hope for everyone involved that he smartens up. She has a great family that he is trying to keep her isolated from. So this is his sister-in-law saying that he's trying to isolate her from her own family. Oh, and this is this was the one that I really um, wanted to talk about because it stood out to me. He never had heart surgery. He had an elective surgery on his ribs, and he never took care of her when she was paralyzed. He probably spent a total of one to two hours in the hospital while she was there over several weeks. Now, I don't know if this is true. I don't know how much information that she has, you know, with regard to their relationship. I mean, she's this, she's her sister, so I'd imagine that she, she knows quite a bit. But if this is true, this is um, interesting. But again, take it with a grain of salt, because obviously she's going to side with her sister. So there's going to be a bias there, obviously. But I mean, what she's saying here is really interesting to me. Uh, she also wrote, who is attacking his children. He's very clearly using them as an excuse like he always does when he wants to get away with something. Remember, he used... Um, I watched Sam Cedar's take on this, and he was pointing out how uh, when he was trying to... Or when I think H3 was trying to debate Steven Crowder, and they suspected that Sam Cedar was going to be brought on, um, they canceled, and he used his kids. 
right? Uh, it's literally my business that I deal with daily. And when a public person like Harvey Weinstein, for example, has been doing terrible things to his wife and everyone in his circle for years, but they're afraid to speak out, it's dire for truth to get out there so bullies uh, stop. So again, referring to not just the, the wife here, but people in his circle. Now we have Dave Landau speaking out, Owen Benjamin speaking out, um, not gay Jared, not being able to speak out because he signed an NDA, which is I think is is just inherently exploitative and fucked up. Also, I would I would have loved to share more prior to this, but Mr. Free Speech bombarded Hillary with legal threats, NDAs, sealed court orders, and attempts to remove the kids from her care. So his own wife, he's bombarding her with legal threats. That's really fucked up and twisted. Dave was wise, referring to Dave Landau, not to sign an NDA. Stephen uses them to control and bully people who attempt to escape his abuse. He's trying to force his wife to sign an NDA right now. That is a huge revelation. Yeah, so basically, that's the Stephen Crowder situation. Unsurprisingly, he is a huge piece of shit. He creates a toxic environment for everyone around him. And um, yeah, he's a terrible fucking person. Beta male.